Hi guys, Lisa He from Borderlands Bakery here and I'm going to show you my recipe for very easy basic modeling chocolate. What is modeling chocolate? A lot of cakers use it to mold beautiful sculptures to put on top of cakes. It's also commonly used in cookies and in a bunch of other sugar arts. A lot of people can use it to build great structural pieces or show pieces and I like to incorporate it in my cookie decorating because it's a great way to add some very easy molded details so you get cute things like this seahorse and so many other shapes and all you need are two basic things for the base recipe of the modeling chocolate and then some molds and maybe some paint or some airbrush and you're done. I love modeling chocolate because it tastes really, really good to me. It's just white chocolate and light corn syrup and it's combined together in such a way that it forms like a Play-Doh. And I prefer it over fondant because it tastes better. And that's about it. <laughs> it does not harden completely the way royal icing or fondant hardens, so keep that in mind. It does start to melt a little bit if the temperatures are very high, but otherwise it keeps its structure very well. If you're going to be using modeling chocolate on your cookies, I don't recommend that you put them in a dehydrator so you don't accidentally have them melt. Today we're gonna to be going over my recipe for modeling chocolate. I'm not a modeling chocolate expert. I found a couple of recipes online, started there, and then played with my ratios until I got something I like. Depending on the climate of where you live, so if it's warmer or it's hotter, you might want to adjust the ratio of that light corn syrup to white chocolate. For my white chocolate, I prefer to use a candy melt or almond bark. They've worked really, really well for me. I feel like I've gotten less good luck using actual white chocolate chips. So if you can find it, almond bark or candy melts should be easily accessible at your local grocer. I'm gonna show you a couple of clips of how I like to use modeling chocolate accents in cakes and on decorated sugar cookies. So you can also make a like dark chocolate version of modeling chocolate. That's not what we're doing today. Today we're going to be doing the white chocolate version of modeling chocolate. It comes together very, very, very quickly. So we're going to heat the chocolate, we're gonna add the light corn syrup, mix it together just so that it comes together and it comes together within like 15 strokes. And then we're going to leave it alone and let it just rest for a couple of hours, come together before we can use it. I've been kind of obsessed with using modeling chocolate in my decorated cookies because I feel like it adds a fun detailed design element. It gives your cookies a little pop of just 3D and you can airbrush it, you can paint on it, you can color the modeling chocolate itself. And if you have a bunch of molds, you can pretty much do anything you want. So the possibilities are endless and it's in the name modeling chocolate. So you can definitely model it and shape it with your hands and sculpt it to make whatever your heart desires. You're only gonna need two ingredients today for your modeling chocolate, light corn syrup and white almond bark. First thing we're gonna do is melt the almond bark. Get your double boiler set up ready. Here I placed a small pan with about an inch of water in it on my stove and I turned it to medium heat. I put my heat safe bowl of almond bark on top of the pan and we're going to wait a few minutes for the water to come to a rolling boil. Once the water comes to a rolling boil, I reduce the heat to low. I keep stirring the almond bark so that the heat is distributed more evenly and so that the chocolate doesn't burn. We can't really save the chocolate if it burns, so we're just trying to avoid that.
All right, so almost all the chocolate is melted at this point. We just have several chunks left. I'm gonna turn the heat off and we'll use the residual heat in the bowl to melt the rest of the chocolate. I'm gonna take this off the double boiler, wipe the bottom of the bowl with a rag so that none of the condensation on the bottom accidentally gets into the chocolate. Any water in the chocolate will cause it to seize up. I'm giving our almond bark here a final stir to dissolve any last remaining chunks. The melted chocolate we're gonna be using should be very smooth. Okay, so here's the part where we have to really pay attention. Place your bowl of melted almond bark on the scale and zero it out. Then you're gonna drizzle in the appropriate amount of light corn syrup. The amount of syrup you use is dependent on how much chocolate you're using. So for this demo, I'm using a one to four ratio or 50 grams of light corn syrup to 200 grams of chocolate. You can have all of this pre-measured out for ease, but I like to reduce the amount of dishes that I have to wash, so I pour the corn syrup directly into my chocolate. Watch super carefully here because things are going to change very quickly. I'm going to give my mixture about 15 turns and then it's gonna thicken and just come together. We want to stop the second the corn syrup has incorporated. Stirring any more will cause the cocoa butter to leach out from the solids and you're gonna be left with a separated mess of oils and solids. If you've gone too far, make sure to read my blog post linked in the description box below to see how we can fix this. Now transfer everything into a Ziploc bag, kind of flatten it out just so that you get as much surface area to cool as possible and set it on your counter and let it cool for a couple of hours. Freshly made modeling chocolate can look a little marbled. As it rests, it'll come together a little bit more and we'll also knead it before using it, smoothing it out even further. This is the fresh modeling chocolate that's rested for about half an hour. It's still soft, slightly warm, and very pliable and not ready to use. I also made modeling chocolate yesterday to show you how it changes as it rests. You can hear how solid the older modeling chocolate is. I'm going to use the modeling chocolate I made yesterday to demo how I use it in molds. I take out a chunk, knead it until it's smooth in my hands. This also helps to reincorporate any small fat solids that may have separated while it was resting or maybe I overmixed it just a tad. Totally okay, all fixable. My natural body temperature is pretty low, so you can kind of see here how my fingers are clean and not oily. If you have a higher body temperature and just naturally run warm or it's just a really warm day, make sure to check out my blog post below for some suggestions on how you can still work with modeling chocolate. I'm not a sculptor by any means, so I prefer to use molds to create modeling chocolate details. Here are some of the molds that I offer in my shop and I've linked you below in the description box and I use these to create many different little accents for my desserts. Here I've got a French macaron that I've adorned with floral modeling chocolate details. I'm going to quickly demo how I use molds. I start out with a pretty detailed shape like the seahorse. Um, I wedge in a bit of modeling chocolate in the center and kind of work it and push it into the smaller spaces by applying pressure with my fingers. I remove and add more modeling chocolate as needed to fill up all the space. Make sure you clean up the edges of the mold by just pushing your modeling chocolate away from the edges towards the center. That way when you pop your molds out, you get a clean edge and you don't have to clean it up or anything like that. You can also use your fingers or the palm of your hand, moving it in a circular motion to smooth out the back of your molded modeling chocolate. Once you're done, set that aside for a couple of minutes and just kind of let your chocolate come back to room temp so that it's easier to unmold.
I'm going to show you how I color some of my modeling chocolate directly. I'm using the Sugar Art Elite colors, not Master Elite, and putting that directly in my modeling chocolate. To control how much powder I get out, instead of tapping the container, I use these mini scoops that I also carry in my store, borderlandsbakery.com shop. Please check us out. Um, I add the powder directly to my modeling chocolate, knead it, and then if I want a brighter color, I add more powder. And if I want to tone it down a little bit, I add more modeling chocolate. The more you work modeling chocolate, the warmer it gets because of your hands and the oils may start leaching out. If it gets oily, simply stop, set it aside and let it rest for a couple minutes just kind of come down in temperature or put it in the fridge for a couple minutes before working with it again. You can kind of tell how it's really warmed up and starting to get super oily. Once it gets really warm and it can also really stick to your fingers, kind of like how you're going to see in this video and how you can see it sticking to my thumbs. We really want to avoid that, so just put that aside and give it some time to come back to room temp. The seahorse has been sitting for a couple of minutes and I also have that shell here. The big shapes that don't have a lot of detail, they're very easy to pop out. But the seahorse, you might have to work a little bit more because they've got more detail in the outline. So I kind of like to wiggle the mold back and forth and just work at it gently pulling it away from the, the, the modeling chocolate to kind of eventually get that to pop out. If you're still having trouble getting detailed shapes out, I suggest popping it in the fridge for a couple of minutes, really cooling down that chocolate, and then it should demold with relative ease. Now we're going to move into a quick sped up compilation of how I use the other molds that are in my shop currently to create some other shapes and other details. As you watch the video, you'll kind of see my technique is generally pulling the mold away while also pulling the chocolate out at the same time. And that way it just ensures that I'm causing as little damage to the shaped chocolate as possible because it is still very soft. I'm also going to show you how I paint on modeling chocolate. Of course, you can also airbrush. Today, I'm going to be using the Sugar Art Elite colors. Again, not Master Elite as that's not meant for chocolate. I'm transferring the powder into a palette using these mini spoons that I showed you earlier. And I'm hydrating the powder using vodka or you can use any other high proof alcohol. Some people use orange juice because for whatever reason they can't use alcohol, but I personally haven't tried it so I can't speak to it. These palettes are lidded, so I just cover it when I'm done painting, let all that liquid naturally evaporate, and reuse the powder in the wells next time by rehydrating it so it really cuts down on the waste. I give my powder and liquid a good mix, and you may have to adjust the liquid to powder ratio to get the coverage you want, but after that, you just have fun and start painting. You can purchase all of these tools, including brushes, palettes, pipettes, and so much more on our website, which I've linked below. It would mean the world to us if you supported our shop so that we can keep creating content like this for everyone. Keep in mind that freshly molded modeling chocolate is still soft, so please handle it with care. You can see how I've kind of braced it with a clean, not wet brush, just to make sure that I hold it in place while painting. After painting these flowers, while the paint is still dry, you can spray it with edible glitter for a little something extra. That's it. That's the crash course on modeling chocolate and how I use it in my cookie decorating. Please leave us a comment below, smash the heck out of that like button, and definitely subscribe to our channel for more videos like this in the future. 
If you have any techniques or tools you want to see demoed, drop them for me in the comment box and we'll see what we can do. Thank you all so much for your love and support. See you next time. You can get very creative with modeling chocolate and you can easily amp up or next level. Oh my god, I suck at this today.